And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. A few weeks ago, I was running a party uh, game show, and I was making up questions for it. And one of the questions was, what were the top-selling games on Amazon, board games? And we knew what some of them were. Oh, Pandemic and Catan and this and that, right? And one of them was Melissa and Doug's Suspend Game. And everyone's like, ah, oh, what's that game? And I was like, I don't know. Let's find out. So I got a copy of it. And it comes in this tube, and I was like, oh, tubes. I don't like tubes. They're hard to put on the shelves. But I'm going to tell you guys right now, this comes in a tube, and it has to be in a tube. I don't know if there's any other way to, to store this. Maybe a box. I don't think so, though. Um, and even this tube is not even that good of quality. But whatever. I am keeping this game. I was amazingly surprised by this. Let me show you. So in the middle of the table, you have this contraption here. It's made up of two, two steel rods that are inserted into a base. Another two steel rods that are connected by this wooden uh, dowel here are placed. You'll see this one has a notch at the top. Each player is going to get different rods of different colors. There's six different colors, red, yellow, green, blue, black, and orange. And if there's less than four players, then the extra are placed into a draw pile. Each of these sticks is a different length and they have a different number of notches in them. On a player's turn, they are simply going to roll a die. And whatever color they roll, I just rolled a red, they have to take that color and place it on the device. So this one's pretty easy. I place it like this. Let's say the next player plays a yellow. Okay, so somehow they have to do the yellow. Now you can't put on the same notch something else is, um, but you can Put it in another notch like this so let's see if i can do this without making the whole thing fall any pieces that fall off when it happens come back to you the yellow one is actually probably the hardest one here's a blue one this one's a little easier oh by the way i'm cheating here you're only allowed to use one hand so you can see that blue piece is placed there maybe the next person rolls another red so that person decides to place it on the other side so now we're a little bit more balanced out and you can see here that this is going to be swinging a little bit in the air. Uh, let's see what color the next person rolls. Next color person rolls a black. So maybe they place the black one there. And then the next person rolls a blue. By the way, if you ever roll a color you don't have, you have to take that color off someone else's pile. So you can see as you're placing more and more that the, the sticks are going around and around another red let's place that red over here now you can never also let it touch the ground if for some reason it swings down so low it touches the ground you have to take the piece off and do it again another red All right, let's place that red over here now you might think that this is pretty simple you're just going to place it criss corner like that but what you're trying to do as you place these is possibly place it so that it's hard for someone else to get. Maybe I'll place one like this here. Woo! All right. And then the next person rolls and gets another yellow. So I'm gonna place that yellow here. Woo! All right. And so you're gonna keep doing this. If you ever place a piece so that it knocks other pieces off, all the pieces that fall off, you put in front of you. The first person to get rid of all their pieces wins. If you roll a color and that color is nowhere on the table, it's not in the draw pile, and it's not in front of you, then you will uh, basically skip your turn and you go to the next person's turn. Again, first person to get rid of all their pieces wins. Now maybe that doesn't look fun to you, but it's so much fun. And it, each time you play this, you are building a work of art. Now. It, it's the experience, not the game, okay? Rolling the die and picking the piece, that works well, but it's really kind of random. Sometimes you just win because you got lucky, and sometimes we've gone around and everyone has an orange piece left and no one's rolling orange. Finally, someone rolls it, they place it, they win. It's not impossible to place all the pieces on, but it's, 
it's, it's, it's difficult. And also when you knock pieces off that come to your pile, like, oh, that's a pretty cool mechanic. Uh, the problem is when you knock the pieces off, you usually knock them all off <laughs> it, because they're all intertangled together. But as you play this more and more, you're trying harder and harder things. Like, I'm going to hook this one over here, and then I'm going to place it on these two. And that's, it's going to stay there. But if you move it at all, there's a chance it will fall off. And you'll find yourself pushing an envelope more and more. This has become one of my favorite dexterity games. It's definitely in the top level of stacking or balance style games. I love it. It's so simple and it looks cool and the metal beams move back and forth as you're placing it and people come around and they're like, oh, what's going to happen now? It's a cool concept. It has this whole balance thing and you find that these things can balance a whole lot more than you think they can and you're sitting here looking at it going, okay, that one's tilted that way, and that's over here, and that's there. So the best place to put one is here, I think. But even though that may be the best place, if I put another one over here, I'm going to make it that much harder for the next person. And that's where it's good. Make sure you play with people only being able to use one hand, because that makes it more difficult. And we added our own house rule, and once all the pieces were on, which has happened a few times, then you start rolling dice, and that's a color you have to pull out without knocking any pieces off, which is much, much more difficult, almost impossible. Um, but hey, folks, I'm, I have to tell you, you know, this is something where I was like, eh, it's going to be some mass market thing. I'll review it just so that I have it in our library of reviews. And it ended up being something that I'm going to find a spot for on the shelf because we have played this probably 10 to 15 times since I got it. And it was just in a row. Boom, boom. Play it again. I brought another grip. Oh, let's play it again. Youth liked it. Kids liked it. My family liked it. Uh, other gamers liked it. Solid style game. Not necessarily a solid style uh, container but I'll find some way to store it because I'm keeping it. Dice Tower Judgment into my collection. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.